In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for Na3PO4 plus BaCl2. This is sodium phosphate and this is barium chloride. First thing we need to do is balance the molecular equation. This is the molecular equation here. It looks like if we put a 3 here, then a 6 here, and a 2 right here, this equation, it would be balanced. So we have our molecular equation. Now we need to write the states. So when we look at something like a sodium compound, that's usually going to be soluble. So it'll break apart into its ions. We call that aqueous. It's going to dissolve in water. Barium chloride, chlorides are very soluble as well. We call that aqueous. So those will dissolve in water. Sodium chloride, we have sodium, very soluble in chloride, very soluble, definitely going to be aqueous. But this barium phosphate, Let's check that out. Sometimes phosphates, they aren't soluble, especially with group two metals like barium. On the solubility table, we look here, we're going to find barium. Barium, that is right here, Ba2+. So we're going to go over here to the phosphates. So here is phosphates, and we see that I. That means it's insoluble. It's not going to dissolve in water. For that reason, it'll be a solid. It'll be at the bottom of the test tube or beaker, just sitting there as a solid. We react these two. This is a precipitate. It falls to the bottom. So we have our states. Next, we're going to split the strong electrolytes apart into their ions, and that'll be the complete ionic equation. So the strong electrolytes, those are the ones with the AQ after. They're going to dissolve in water. So we need the charges. Sodium's in group one. That's a one plus charge. Phosphate, that's a polyatomic ion. Need to remember that one. It's always three minus. Barium's in group two. That's two plus in the chloride ion. That's always negative. Sodium group one, so we have the positive, the negative, two plus, and then this phosphate, three minus. So we have our charges. We have two times three. We have six sodium ions. I'm not going to write aqueous after each thing. We'll do that at the end. Plus, we have two of these phosphate ions. So two of these PO4, three minus ions. Plus, we have three barium ions, so 3Ba2+, plus, and then we have 3 times 2, 6 chloride ions, 6Cl-. minus. Those are our reactants. On the product side, 6 of the sodium ions, 6Na+, plus, and then 6 chloride ions as well. And then since we have a solid here, it's at the bottom of the test tube. It's together. It's not broken up. We don't break up solids in net ionic equations. So we just write Ba3PO4, we have two of those PO4s there, and that's a solid. So we're not going to break that apart in our net ionic equation. So that gives us the complete ionic equation, and now we can cross out spectator ions. They're on both sides of the equation. So I can see the reactants up here. I have six sodium ions. I also have that in the products. I can cross that out. Here I have, it looks like, six chloride ions products, six chloride ions, cross it out. But everything else, that's unique. So we have our net ionic equation. So let me clean this up a little bit, and then we'll have it in a form that's a little easier to read. When I look at this net ionic equation, I notice there's a problem. I have three barium ions here, and I only have one here. That can't be, because this has to also be balanced for each of the atoms. I look up here, and I forgot to write three after the barium. So that's why that happened. It's always good to check your work. So that's the net ionic equation for Na3PO4 plus BaCl2. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.